How's it going everyone? The PlayStation Store has kicked off its essential pick sale and I got some good deals under the price of $20, not going under $10 or under $5. Although the first deal I mentioned is going to be $10 for some people, a little bit more expensive for other. You'll see why when we get into this video, but a lot of good deals and let's just get right into it and let's kick things off with what I think is... Quite possibly the best deal in this entire sale. That might be a little bit hyperbole, but I think the Crisis Remastered Trilogy, you guys, 75% off for $12.49. Or if you are a PlayStation Plus subscriber, you'll save an additional 5% for $9.99. I think that's an awesome deal, and we finally got this Crisis Remaster Trilogy to a price point where I can easily recommend it to everybody. This came out uh, back in fall of 2021, and it was exciting to see Crisis 2 and Crisis 3 get ported to PlayStation 4 and being playable on PlayStation 5, but the price point of $50, given that these games readily go on sale on PC for like 5 to 10 bucks, uh, I think the trilogy goes on sale for like you know, $10, $15 on PC because, you know, obviously the game's been available on PC for so long. So it was just hard to stomach $50. However, for $12.49 or better yet, $9.99, okay, now we're cooking and this is an awesome, awesome price. Crisis 1 is beloved by a lot of people. It's got more of an open level design that I do like. However, Crisis 2 is the one that I really, really enjoyed. It had a great time with it. More linear, more focused, but did really have a great time with Crisis 2. Crisis 3, on the other hand, wasn't crazy about Crisis 3, uh, but it's still enjoyable. Like, you're getting these games for their single-player FPS component, and they're all enjoyable games for what they are. Um, I think for $9.99 or $12.49, you know, essentially paying $4 and change a pop if you're paying the regular price, or $3 and change if you're paying the $9.99 price, it's a great deal, and I would strongly recommend it. Don't expect something blow away. Again, a lot of what carried Crisis back in the day was its technical ability. Like, Crisis back in 2007 was a big deal. Can you can your PC run a Crisis? It's on and so forth um and crisis 2 even though it was a pc and console game it looked great on 360 and ps3 even and uh you know that obviously doesn't hold up true to a 2024 audience the game still looked good but uh yeah that element won't be there but for 1249 or 999 tremendous tremendous deal definitely recommended next up for you jrpg heads out there ease 8 lacrimosa of dana 50 percent off for 1999 is a great pickup a lot of attention or at least Relative to what Ease is, some attention around Ease right now with Ease 10 coming out later this year. You've got uh, Memories, uh, Memoir, Oath and Falcata, excuse me, being confirmed for a Western release. Exciting time to be an Ease fan, which was a franchise for a long time. We get a little bit of the short end of the stick over here stateside, but Ease 8, I feel like did a good job of opening up the audience to a lot of people. Now, with Ease, you really have to keep your expectations in line. The visuals aren't crazy, and fundamentally, they follow a similar style each game, but guess what? That style works. What you get is good action gameplay. You got a quality soundtrack, and with Ease 8, I also found a pretty uh, engaging, mystery-driven storyline that was easy to invest into. 1999, I think, is a great price for Ease 8, and uh, if you're getting into the franchise, you can really jump into any of the games. Like, they kind of tell their own contained story. Um, but yeah, Ease 8 is a game that a lot of people kicked their uh, Ease journey with, and you can circle back and play some of the other games. There's a lot of Ease titles to go through, and Ease 9 is great as well, but uh, yeah. Yeah, $19.99 for Ease 8. Great pickup. It is available on Plus Extra, so you can play it that way. Next up, now, this game isn't fantastic, but I want to give Biomutant a shout. It's $15.99 without a Plus subscription. Really, I would recommend it if you have a Plus subscription. It's $11.99 on that end. This was a Plus Essential title. Biomutant is a game that so many people were really looking forward to. It was done by Experiment 101, a brand new studio. They had developers that had worked on games like Just Cause, and I remember seeing the game, and I'm like, damn, this looks like a really, really compelling open-world action RPG, and it turned out to be okay. Was it worth $60? Oh, hell no. And there were elements of this game that were absolutely great. The narration of this game was terrible. Uh, however, the gameplay I found interesting, and I thought the world was incredibly vibrant and fun to explore. If you're okay with more of like a double-A open-world game that certainly has its shortcomings, I think there's a lot of fun to be found with Biomutant. Uh, just keep your expectations in line, and you can have a good time with it. 
And uh, at this point, you're not going into the expectations that I had back in 2019, and they were probably mistakenly placed. Like, I should have known better than expecting a top-level open-world game out of Biomune, but if you go into it now, I think there's a good experience to be had, and you have the PS5 upgrade here as well, which I think will enhance your experience quite a bit. Next up, Nier Automata Game of the Yorha Edition, 60% off for $15.99. I actually recently started watching the Nier Automata anime series, and uh, I feel like that anime series is pretty well done. Like, for video game adaptation, my expectations are pretty low. Like, that Scarlet Nexus anime I thought was terrible. Uh, but Nier Automata, I thought... Uh, ha like, so far, what I've watched of it, I thought the anime adaptation's been pretty good. But what what is the star of Nier Automata? You're damn right, it's the game. The game is absolutely tremendous. And yes, it's a little bit... A little bit would be putting it lightly. It's a lot bit confusing from a narrative standpoint when you play through it initially, but then it comes together really nicely, and the game from a soundtrack standpoint, visual standpoint, the action gameplay done by Platinum is tremendous. $15.99 for it is such a great pickup that I strongly recommend it. Would recommend you to play Near Replicant as well, that's a great time, uh, but Atomina is certainly the stronger game. Next up, we got Raccoon City Edition. 75% off for $14.99. This is Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3, the remake. Resident Evil 2, li literally one of the best remakes of all time. Done by the same team that did the tremendous RE4 remake. RE2 as a remake is excellent. RE3 obviously has its shortcomings. Now, I'm not, like, I didn't grow up a big Resident Evil fan in the, in the sense that I'm playing the classic, classic titles. The first game that I got super into was the OG RE4. Um... But, uh, from all accounts, to those that were super into the original, RE3 is a little bit of a cut experience, and I think they had more hopes for the multiplayer component, etc., etc., but still a, a fun game to go through, very, very short, but RE2, certainly the star here, and for $14.99 to get both, I think that's a damn good deal, $7.50 a pop worthwhile there. Next up, another Capcom release. We got Monster Hunter World Iceborne Master Edition. This is a game that if you're going to be picking it up, clear up a couple weekends because there's a lot to get to here and there's a lot of content and there's a lot that you can sink your teeth into and it comes down to do you enjoy the gameplay loop. Monster Hunter isn't going to give you this incredible narrative for you to sink your teeth into in the sense that it's going to be emotionally engaging or anything like that. You're really getting into this game to slay the big monsters to uh, you know, get better gear and continue through that process and it's an enjoyable game in that regard uh, but just keep your expectations in check and you'll have a good time with it for $19.99 getting the base game and the expansion I think is a really good deal I know there's a lot of excitement around Monster or Wilds obviously if you're picking up th this game you don't have that affinity towards Monster Hunter yet and you know, if you wait until Wilds, you're going to be spending $70 on a game that you don't know if you're really going to get that into. Try Out World, you're getting the expansion here. Rise is also on sale with Sunbreak for the same price. That's an option, but World is technically the better game. Rise started out as a Nintendo Switch only title. You get the idea, but uh, yeah, Mushroom World 1999 with Iceborne, I think, pretty good. A couple Final Fantasy games. Final Fantasy 12, The Zodiac Age, 60% off for $19.99. I think this is an awesome deal on a super underrated Final Fantasy title. Now, if you go look at it from a critical standpoint, this game's got like a 93 on Metacritic, the original release, that is. But I remember back in 2006 when FF12 came out, there was very much a mixed reception from the audience, uh, the Final Fantasy fandom about this game. It's because, in my opinion, uh, a lot of the pushback was because of the combat style. It played more like an MMO rather than the turn-based combat system that a lot of other Final Fantasy games had employed prior to this. Um, you know, but FF12, from that standpoint, the combat at this point is something that is going to be totally accepted by anybody that's getting into this game now. I think, like, nobody's going to look at the combat and be like, oh, it's not, it's not enjoyable. I think it's a perfectly fine combat system, and... You know, elements like the quickenings, I think, add a cool layer to it. Flashy, if nothing else. My main criticism with Final Fantasy XII is it probably had the least compelling Final Fantasy main character, at least, you know, post-FF3. Vaughn, and I get what they tried to go for with Vaughn in the sense that he's just a regular dude embroiled in this large-scale conflict that's going on around him. And you can make the argument that Ash and Botch and Balthia are more so the characters to get invested into. But Vaughn, Vaughn is the dude. Vaughn is the dude that this story centers around. Um, and, you know, I'm not saying he's a terrible, terrible character. He's just super bland. Um, but... Narratively, outside of Vaughn, I feel like FF12 has a compelling story, and it has an absurd amount of content. Like, you can really, 
uh, invest a lot of time into FF12 if you're trying to do everything. And you don't have to do everything, but and if just going through the main story is going to take you a while, but... Overall, $19.99, great price on FF12. Uh, maybe not a great price, uh, given that this is originally a PS2 game that got remastered, but it's a Square Enix title, they usually hold up in price. Next up, we have Final Fantasy XV Royal Edition, 60% off for $13.99. Now, when Final Fantasy XV came out back in, I think it was 2016, yeah, 2016, I thought this game was incredibly disappointing. I am recommending this game from the lens that you are a new Final Fantasy player, or Final Fantasy 15 player, I should say, and you're going into the game with no expectations, because I had grandiose expectations out of this game's narrative. The narrative is completely disjointed and a mess. The combat style, super flashy, super pleasing to look at. The game in general is incredible from a visual standpoint, but the combat can get a little bit redundant. The open world is gorgeous, the soundtrack is great, and you're getting the Royal Edition here, which adds a lot of uh, DLC and whatnot, and the DLC, kinda kinda lame how they did it uh, in this game, but the fact is, with the Royal Edition, you get it, it is kind of uh, content that should have been in the game, but you get the idea, you get a lot of content for your dollar here, and for $14, you're not going into it with the expectation that, oh, it's gonna be this blow away narrative with this in-depth combat system, no, if you're looking for a fun open world action RPG, you'll get that with Final Fantasy 15, and again, you're going into it with much lesser expectation than I did uh, going into the release of the game, which was, um, you know, a lot of people had high expectations when you were following this game for a decade, going back to when it was Versus 13, that was naturally going to happen, and it was a colossal disappointment on that end. If you end up enjoying Final Fantasy 15, I also recommend watching the Kingsglaive movie, I thought that was a decent little movie, um, and that content really does add a little bit of context that is necessary for the Final Fantasy 15 narrative. Moving on from that, we have the Devil May Cry HD Collection and 4 Special Edition Bundle 1484. I know a lot of you guys only play Devil May Cry 5, and the thing is, I did enjoy the older Devil May Cry games growing up. However, these games absolutely show their age. Wonky camera, the visuals obviously aren't great from the standpoint that DMC 1 through 3 are PS2 games. DMC 4, um, the development of that game seemingly got cut short. I don't know the exact story that happened with DMC 4 in terms of development, but it, it got really redundant and they had to reuse a lot of content and I believe that's because the development of the game did get cut short, but DMC 4 is a good game and visually it still looks pretty decent. I mean, I can't believe that game is 16 and a half years old at this point, which is wild to think about. Um, DMC 1 through 3, they're well done action games, and I should say DMC 1 and 3 are well done action games. People hate DMC 2. I'm not that crazy of a hater of DMC 2. Like, do I think it's, it's as good as DMC 1 and 3? No. Uh, but I still thought it was okay. And the timeline of DMC is uh, kind of weirdly done. I believe it goes DMC 3 into DMC 1 into DMC 4 into DMC 2. Never been super into the DMC narrative, but I think that's how the story is structured. It might be 1 into... 3 into 2 into 4. Uh, again, it's all over the place as far as that's concerned, but uh, yeah, again, DMC narrative never really did anything for me. Next up, Digimon Survive, 75% off for $14.99. Really enjoyed Digimon Survive. I am a huge Digimon fan. Like, Digimon is the IP I grew up with more so than Pokemon. Like, don't get me wrong, I love Pokemon as well growing up, but Digimon is the one that resonated with me more so. So I do have that little bit of bias when it comes to Digimon, uh, the games and everything like that. I enjoyed Survive. You have to know what you're getting yourself into when it comes to this game. It is very much more so a visual novel rather than the tactical RPG gameplay that you'll see as well. Um, the tactical RPG gameplay really makes up a minuscule amount, not a minuscule amount, but a smaller portion than what the narrative-driven visual novel is. The story is really good and a little bit darker of a narrative than you're used to out of a Digimon story, but overall, I did enjoy it. Again, if you're okay with the visual novel style to it, you'll have a good time with it, and $14.99, I think, is a pretty good pickup for that. Sonic Colors Ultimate, 60% off for $15.99. It's a well-done 3D Sonic game. Great soundtrack, great visuals. Um, Content-wise, it honestly probably could have been uh, adjusted as far as the content offered. But uh, overall, I had a good time with it. And if you like the throwback Sonic games, like you'll have a good time with Sonic Colors. Is it at the level of Sonic 3D games at their absolute peak? No, but uh, it's a worthwhile game to go through. At $16, not a bad price point. And then lastly, we got Disco Elysium, the final cut, 70% off for $11.99. Certainly not a game for every 
everyone. Um, I've had friends that I've recommended this game to, and they literally despise this game. It is a slower-paced, methodical, narrative-driven title, but the writing in this game is absolutely excellent, and if you give it uh, the time to really flesh out, it becomes one of the more rewarding narrative-driven experiences that you can go through. For $11.99, again, if you're into your story-based games, you'll love Disco Elysium, and it's generally considered uh, by most people that have played it to be one of the best written video games of all time so 12 bucks for that pretty good there but that'll do it for me again a lot of great deals available this is just 10 to 20 dollars a lot more to go over and i know that um you know these deals are always available but you guys seem to always watch these videos so i'm gonna keep doing them that's gonna do it for me let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below sound off there thank you for watching and goodbye Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.